know how much more cheese a man's heart or body can take, but we're putting it to the limits today. Look, it just won't end. Welcome back to the Minnesota State Fair. We've done a lot already. So far, during this Minnesota State Fair deep dive, I've tried 30 different unique foods. Oh, that's very satisfying. Day one, I visited mega food factories, cranking out french fries, corn, turkey legs, and thousands of cookies by the minute. These are like the size of Arnold Schwarzenegger's calves in the 1970s. But no trip to this annual event is complete without trying our final, heart-stopping fried fair offering. This is my final day here, but before I can go, I need to try my favorite food. One does not come to the state fair without trying this food. This is something you can't pick up at your grocery store. You can't order it on Amazon, and good luck trying to make it at home. It all starts here. There's so much action back here. How many people do you have working right now in this small space? We have probably about 45 people. Have you ever considered yourself overstaffed? Always. Okay. So it's just a matter of having enough people so that it all runs pretty smooth and most importantly, guests are not waiting. Right, if you're overstaffed, you can over deliver. Exactly. This is Dave Cavallero. He could have spent his days voicing trailers or UFC promos, but instead, exactly 20 years ago, he decided to open the mouth trap, giving State Fair patrons a taste of heaven with his deep fried cheese curds. Soon after, this became Minnesota's most irresistible dairy addiction, and I'm here to get my fix. Can we talk about the cheese? Sure. The cheese comes from Wisconsin. How did you decide which vendor in Wisconsin to get your cheese from? I think in the last 20, 25 years, most of us that are in the cheese curd business have been buying our cheese from Ellsworth Creamery. In America's Dairyland, also known as Wisconsin, the village of Ellsworth is officially Wisconsin's cheese curd capital, thanks to Ellsworth Cooperative Creamery. What began as a humble butter and egg plant now churns out 180,000 pounds of cheese curds every single day. But what the flip is a cheese curd? Cheese curds develop as fresh milk is acidified, coagulated, and heated. These steps separate the liquid, known as whey, and the solid, which is the curd we're after. The next step is cheddaring, through which the curds are stacked, cut up, pressed together, and stacked again repeatedly. Once the desired texture forms, the curds are cut, salted, boxed, and shipped here to the mouth trap mere hours later. There we go. Oh my gosh. What I love too is the inconsistency of shape because they all create a little bit different texture and a little variation of flavor. Yes, they do. Ooh, here's a good one right here. All right. Oh. Sorry, I just think in a moment. There was no fine. It's so creamy, just such a fresh, wonderful taste. The texture of it, it's like so thick, it's fun to chew through. Yes, it is, yeah. They do a nice job over there at the Creamery. These cheese curds are so good, it's almost impossible to imagine them getting any better. But they do, and Dave's gonna tell me how. So you've got the cheese curd, it was driven in a refrigerator truck, it gets to your door, and what do you do? Well, it gets to our door, we put it away about 11 o'clock at night. Our first year, I think we probably brought in 3,500 pounds per night. Now we're bringing in seven to 8,000 pounds. We get here bright and early in the morning, and seven o'clock, we're making the batter. What is the batter made out of? Is it a wheat flour? It's got a wheat flour to it, right. It's got several ingredients that, like I say, it's proprietary. It's a batter that we buy locally here. We mix it with ice cold water. The consistency is very close to a pancake batter. The most important is getting that batter right. And if it is too thick, too thin, too whatever, then it kind of permeates throughout the course of the whole process. I see the people mixing the cheese curds. They're not being quick about it. They're massaging each single cheese curd. How important is that? Really important. We want to make sure that each piece of the cheese is coated. We don't want to do the downward motion, so to speak, because that's just mashing it together. We want to keep it kind of like this. Once we make several batches, the operator generally has a down. Last step, it's coated, it needs to go in the fryer. I don't see any timers here. How do you know when it's done? Actually, by the look of it. The oil is at 400 degrees. We change the oil nightly. We clean the fryers nightly. So we're starting off with fresh oil. We drop them in. You see the little edges kind of brown, and that's when you know they're done. When I think State Fair, I think this right here, cheese curds. $18 for a bucket of cheese curds. This is far too much for one person. I gotta share. Cheese curds, sir? You gotta share them? Sure I gotta share them. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you for your service. Cheese curds. Shareable. Uh, which one do I try? Here's what I love about picking. There's like little ones like this, which are going to be more crunchy. And then there's big fat ones like this, which are like juicy. Cheese juice. That's my favorite kind of juice. Screw lemonade, screw apple juice, orange juice. No, cheese juice. If you're from outside the U.S., come to Wisconsin. Try the cheese curds. Cheese there is unlike cheese from any other place in the world. I've tried it all, and there's nothing that comes close. The only way to make it better is with what they've done here. Mmm, it bursts in your mouth. It's just a spray of hot cheese goo. You look at these, they're all kind of stuck together like a big clump. That counts as one piece. Here's what's great about the fair. If they mark the calories on every food, this is information you don't want to have. We're trying to have some comfort food. Knowing the calories would make you not so comfortable. This is it. This is a pinnacle. We bring this up. That being said, there are a couple other new cheese creations being flaunted about here at the fair. These are cheese items that might deserve a spotlight, but don't usually get one. Cheese curds get all the attention. They're like the hot chicken high school, except for 18 bucks, I can actually hang out with these. Let's check out some other cheese. On State Fair Day 2, Calvin and I took on bizarre bites, strange food combinations like dough skits, an unusual spicy mix between a donut and a biscuit. <laughs> we had a pickle surrounded with cream cheese and a cloak of pastrami. It's so good! And even a Nordic waffle filled with mac and cheese topped with a bone-in drumstick. Oh my god! What a combination! As you can see, folks in the Midwest are quite fond of comfort food that's designed to send you into a deep postprandial coma. But when you wake from your insulin-induced slumber, you may reach out for something new. That's where hot Indian food comes in. Here they serve authentic Indian flavors in formats familiar to locals. And since I'm on a cheese roll today, I'm going to keep going with this. This is a very interesting international fried cheese sensation. This is paneer pakora. Paneer pakora. It's a popular batter fried cheese snack originating in northern India. I've been to India many times. They love cheese, but they eat a really different type of cheese. Their cheese, in this case, is called paneer. This soft, milky cheese is an essential ingredient in many renowned Indian dishes like Pollock paneer, in which the paneer is simmered in a spinach curry. Oh, it's so good. Wow. Paneer cheese is made from cow or buffalo milk. It's curdled, kneaded, and cut into yummy, nutritious, creamy cubes. But this isn't even the paneer's final form. Imagine cottage cheese, how that's kind of fun to chew on. Now imagine that in a cube form. They take that cube, they put their own signature masala on there, they give it a little bit of a dip in a batter, they fry it, and here it is. Indian cheese curds. What? Sounds pretty unique to me. On the side, we've got a sauce. We'll talk about that later. One step at a time. Boom. Bite number one. I'm going for it. I want it to be good. Is it going to be good? Let's see. Oh, I like that. Delicious Indian spices, similar to like a curry. Cheese curds, they melt. The paneer, it doesn't melt. So even though it heats up, it doesn't really change its physical state. It just becomes like a hotter version of the cube that it is. On the outside, it's nice and crunchy. It really matches the fair theme. Everything being fried and in oil. Now, the sauce. This is a butter chicken sauce. But for some reason, in Minnesota, they've decided to call it tomato butter. Something I'd never heard of when I was in India. If I know anything about Indian cuisine, is that you can never have too much seasoning or too much sauce or too much flavor. Let's try it out. Mmm. Yeah, it's like a milky tomato sauce. And it's got a little bit of heat. On my spice meter, it's like a 1.5. But for Minnesotans, it's like a 7. This could kill my grandma. And she's already dead. That's actually true. My mom doesn't watch the show. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> on State Fair Day 3, Calvin returned as we took on this fair's infamous stick food. From dogs to alligator. It's smiling, look. From a whole fried Snickers bar. It's so good. I'm going to make them. To a spaghetti dinner residing on a stick. What do you call a fake pasta? An impasta. Ah. Now, I'm returning to oodles of noodles. What I'm getting this time may not defy gravity, but it's still as daring a food feat as any. In a pan, add cheddar cheese, palm oil, and macaroni. Mix well and serve in a bowl. But wait, isn't that just mac and cheese? You ask in a dumb guy voice. Well, yes, it is. Except... <laughs> they also add a load of Wisconsin cheese curds. This isn't your run-of-the-mill mac and cheese. My friends, this is a spectacle, a creation to die for. This is mac and cheese curds. Our final, final state fair food. Now this looks like mac and cheese, but mixed in are those cheese curds. Now, they're not fried cheese curds. These are raw... Raw? 
Naked, they're naked cheese curds. When I do a nice cheese pull, you can see the curds are kind of breaking apart, melting, they're gooey. I don't know how much more cheese a man's heart or body can take, but we're putting it to the limits today. We're gonna find out. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. That's over the top. This is satisfying on so many levels. First of all, as I dig around in here, I'm finding little bits of cheese curd. These are just little flavor pockets. I mean, the mac and cheese is already cheesy enough. It's over the top. It's like as melty and cheesy and creamy as it could be. Then on top of that, tons of cheese curds. Let's try one more bite. Mmm. Oh. Oh, yes. It's everything that's good for you. It's carbohydrates, it's salt, it's cheese, it's oil, butter, fat, an extra stick of bread on the side. I'm not sure what for. Yeah, it's just bread. This right here is my jam. This makes me very happy. Can you see the stretchiness? Would you look at it? Are you looking at it? One more bite. Oh. Well done. A lot of people try to do cheese curds. Don't do that. Do your own thing or find a way to add cheese curds to your existing food. Huh? You have corn dogs? Add cheese curds. Corn on the cob? <laughs> cheese curds. Everything could use a little bit more cheese curd. Guys, so that is the end of our fun fair food here at Minnesota State Fair. I promise, I swear, there's no more foods. I think that is 33 foods that we've had in the past four days. How am I not in a stretcher with an IV in my arm? I don't know. Next time you're in Minnesota, next time you're in the USA, next time you're on planet Earth, get over here in late August and come to the State Fair. It's a great time. There's a ton of food. It's raining, so I'm going to end it right here. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. Hey, wow, this is so, I just feel like I'm in Truman Show or something. This has to be available once a year, because if you could eat this every week, the rates of heart disease would skyrocket. You don't want any. No, I've had plenty today already. Are you secretly lactose intolerant? No, not at all. At some point in your life, if you are in the USA already, you need to make a drive to Wisconsin. Sorry, I'm just assuming that if you want to go to Wisconsin, you can't afford a plane ticket, so you would have to drive. <laughs> is that is that me? Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. A oh, peace. Oh, I gotta get an umbrella from the umbrella store. Also, where's my coffee? Oh, hold on. It's, I got, that's right. Here, I got it now. Okay. <laughs>